So we've always asked the question, what happened last summer? In my first thread that I wrote in October 2021 about 10 KTF storytelling, that was one of the questions that I asked as well. And I was like, what the hell happened last summer? We're seeing this now play out where it looks like Wagmisan was in the other side last summer. What that means is that Wagmisan has had Coda Juice before. Is Wagmisan making Coda Juice? Does he know who the plug is? When did he first go to the other side? And then the first trip and Wagmisan losing his glasses makes so much more sense now because why were Wagmisan's glasses in the other side? He went to the other side and then he came back and he forgot his glasses there. So there's so many things that are starting to click now and I'm so excited. And it, this was such a cool moment, I think, to look at it at a meta level of the other side and 10KTF both experiencing a Thursday and for us to be live streaming that day as well and to see both and get the reactions. I thought that was such an interesting moment. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Damn Show. We're on episode 24, 25. I don't know, but this is the last one before the new year. The last one. The next time we will see you will be in 2023. Maybe how's it going all the way over in an island off the coast of Italy? Yeah, <laughs> it's going great here. Um, yeah, just spending Christmas with my family, trying to make everybody everything work with the time zones because you know I'm used to being in a, um, New York City, so much easier for NFTs and stuff. But we're making it work and uh, uh, just uh, just having nice moments with family. Nice, nice. Yeah, Christmas is tomorrow this is christmas eve we're recording it on christmas eve so don't ever tell you that we're not dedicated we're out here we're trying to make it work diamond is still away we we do expect to get him hat. back sometime in 2023 and the, you still have the hat santa yeah. he stole that from santa actually he showed up on our live stream santa. I stole it from Sana as uh, he's very angry at me, but he, we were already, um, we had a bad relationship in general, so I don't care. I just want his hat. Whoa, I, I, so I you were on the naughty list then for a while. Yeah, I was. And now I'm going to be next year too, probably after after doing this. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> the well, most important year, is that would, I'm in, in the good, in the even... good list for Wag Me San. That's what I care about. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I wouldn't even think about next year. Christmas hasn't happened yet. So this year, you're also going to be on the naughty list. Uh, you're going to be yeah. expecting some coal in your crates. Watch out. Don't play with fire, maybe. <laughs> no, no. Wag me, son, loves me. Okay. <laughs> we had some, look, we had some insane news in the past, uh, this past Thursday. That was, let's start there. What a Thursday. So what as Thursday. usual, we're doing our live stream and we also had Maggie and Brandon join us. So thank you. Shout out to New Tokyo Rumors for them jumping on. But I want to start with, um, you know what? Why don't we start with going one or two days back? Let's talk about Yuga Labs announcing a new CEO. They just hired Daniel Allegre, who was the president and COO of Activision Blizzard. Let's pull up his resume. This is Dan the man right here. This is the guy that's going to be leading Yuga. That is going to be leading Yuga. So we see he did two years and nine months as president and CEO of Activision. And then we can skip that because mm -hmm. that's just like a board of directors. But previous to that, he was at Google actually. So it was 16 years at Google. Uh, his latest thing before heading to Activision was president of global retail and shopping and payments. And then you can see all the other roles that he had over the past 16 years. Um, and then this gets way too far back. This is January 2000, so that's not super relevant. But his education, he was a lawyer, he graduated from Harvard with JD and an MBA. I don't know if, I don't know if, yeah, it's a JD and an MBA. So he did business school and uh, law school at the same time. And then he went to Princeton before that. So, um, wow. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot going on here. Maybe. Thoughts. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, um, 
you know, uh, I love yoga and um, obviously um, I'm pretty bullish on this and uh, um, the fact that the new CEO uh, has so much um, experience and especially uh, on his last, uh, in, the, in the last company that he worked for, um, which was, you know, a gaming company. So uh, a lot of things that will be very, very important and needed for uh, the launch of the, of the other side. Like, as we know, uh, Yuga will be trying and hopefully uh, achieving uh, the goal of becoming um, with the other side, like with launching the other side as one of the biggest um, games in the world. Uh, so mm -hmm. we need a very, a very, very skilled person in the gaming industry to help them do that. Uh, as always, we're always a bit uh, skeptical about people that jump into Web3 from Web2. Uh, nothing like, as you know, there is nothing in a um, resume that can say that that person is going to be 100% perfect for web3 mm -hmm. but obviously if it's like high level professional like he is and uh, with a lot of uh experiences in different um in different companies uh i can um expect that he also uh, has a high level of adaptability to different scenarios and uh, that would be i think fundamental in this case because of course a lot of knowledge in the gaming industry it's necessary and super important but we need to adapt that old gaming industry to the new gaming industry that will come with web3 so uh, all the co-creation uh, that ha will have to be done, including uh, communities, including uh, members, um, the fact that uh, the other side is going to be a place where we are going to own uh, our um, our assets, not like it was before in other games, that the games were owning everything. You were just playing the game. Uh, so all of this will have to change. And uh, um, for sure, I'm bullish. I see that that, that resume is like nuts. <laughs> it's incredible, uh, starting from education and what he did uh, after that. But still, we need to test that in the NFT space and yeah, in a Web3 space. So I can't wait to see that. What I think is interesting is that this is Yuga fully playing their hand and telling us exactly with this hire, with this, uh, by making Dan the CEO that the other side is the main thing of what we're trying to do here. This is our big play of the decade. So it's going to be gaming, it's going to be this. Uh, and so I think that's interesting. And you need somebody that, like you said, has experience in that world, because I think that the whole market of the other of of gaming is it's multi billions of dollars, and it's only going to increase as this decade wears on. the The new thing here is that is it our NFTs like coupling ownership with gaming, the new wave that people are going to pile into, and so you can even imagine. When I think about uh, Blizzard and World of Warcraft, you know, I think about um, I think about the other games, Fortnite. I think about League of Legends. I think about uh, Dota Two. I grew up playing. Many people don't know this, but I started playing Dota two, Dota in like 2007, and I spent like a good nine years of my life playing Dota Two. So I love that game. It was incredible, mm -hmm. and um, so you can see that 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 game only continued its prominence same thing with league where they had massive in-person tournaments at arenas and you know mult multiple tournaments across the world for competition and so you can expect that the other side wants nothing different they're going to want things like that as well and so that's interesting i also think that i i look at we knew labs and that acquisition and that acquisition makes even more sense because it's not just 10 KTF, it's not just the uh, the story. And I've said it's an aqua hire before. It's also, you look at uh, people on the team, they have gaming experience, specifically Bam Bam, you know, worked at Riot Games, which runs League of Legends for many years. Or she 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 played a 
role in as a product manager in Riot Games for for a number of years, and so she obviously has context into gaming as well. And then you have people like uh, you have people like uh, Paul who did, was at Coachella for twenty years for the company behind Coachella, and so you can see that he you know understands how to put on large scale events and bookings and all that. And he's the VP of operations. And so all of this stuff kind of starts to make way more sense that uh, of why the aqua hire. It's not, and I've said that before, even when it happened, I'm like, this is definitely part aqua hire. I can start to see individuals and where they fall into the ecosystem and why they were so valuable for Yuga to acquire like that. So I think that's interesting. And then obviously you have Figgy as the chief content officer, uh, which leads into... A uh, pretty cool double tweet on Thursday where we had, for the first time, the other side it was a part of Thursday. And it started there, actually. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the clip right now that played on other side first. nice okay (laughs) first of all i'm gonna talk about it oh the music when it kicks in third of the way in or two-thirds of the way in just the bass the mm, so good it is so (laughs) good uh second thing that stands out is that was all in-game footage so it starts off by saying they're on nine three five three and um, in the bottom right, you can see it's in-game footage, so that's what the game actually looks like. Uh, other side, and then at the end, we see Coda Curtis with an obelisk, uh, or or what appears to be a piece of the obelisk, and that obelisk that I'm referring to is on the other side's website of just like that giant seven-piece, um, or like eleven-piece obelisk. I think that's what it is, possibly. And so for some reason, they were going on a hunt looking for that and they found it. And this all leads into a a longer article that Yuga Labs released at the exact same time. But we're going to wait on that. Maybe thoughts and impressions on that video. Go. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I love the music. I think I rewatched it uh, at least maybe 20, 30 times because of the music i just want to hear that moment again it's so so cool so amazing job uh with that video um and yeah uh i think there is also one of the uh i don't know how to call them to be honest like one of the small max uh it's with them uh how do you call it right the ones that we were uh, actually using small mac it's like (laughs) um you know, uh, one of those that we were using on the first trip uh, of the other side. So I don't know if that those are going to be uh, still used for people that don't have uh, um, other kind of avatars. That's going to be like the default avatar if you're not going to customize or you don't have an NFT to use. Um, so, yeah, we have these three characters that uh, are just uh, um, in this uh, um uh, in in this uh, uh, land that has a lot of sand and then there are these bones of this animal. It's super cool. 
um it's just it just wants you like it's just uh, makes you super excited about the game to be honest like you just can't wait to see what's happening and what's in store for us and as you said uh, together with the video um we got a very very interesting article with a lot of alpha and information so we should definitely jump into that let's talk more about the longer form article that Yuga released along with this video. Let me start off by reading some of the paragraphs. Other Side is an incredibly ambitious project, a bold vision of interoperable metaverse that is built in large part by the community. A digital world where you can bring your NFT to life as a playable avatar, meet up with friends, and most importantly, have a fun, weird time. Voyagers ventured into the Other Side this year with the first trip. With nearly 5,000 concurrent users joining up with Curtis and Blue to face off against the corrupted giant Coda. Next year, Voyagers will continue their journey with more trips and opportunities to make their mark as a persistent metaverse experience comes into view. This blog serves as a quick year end of update. In the coming weeks and months, we'll post regularly, so stay tuned with that. So let's start with meeting our team. Recently, we brought on Chief Gaming Officer Spencer Tucker. Spencer joined us from Scopely, where he was president of games. He's been at the forefront of the free-to-play movement that revolutionized gaming back when everyone thought it wouldn't be a thing. Spencer has built an incredible, uh, talented team that's working that has worked at places like Disney, Activision, EA, Netflix, Zynga, shipping games for major franchises like Medal of Honor, Disney Infinity, Lord of the Rings, Deer Hunter, and Marvel. Next year, we'll welcome Daniel Allegra, Yuga's new CEO, who is joining us from Activision Blizzard. We're excited to bring Daniel's experience and expertise to help stretch the boundaries for what's possible for other side and offer new ways for Voyagers to deepen their participation in the development of other side. Improbable has a veteran team working on the underlying tech of other side. Their team members have contributed to some of the favorite, your favorite games, including League of Legends, Call of Duty, Elite, Dangerous, Battlefield, Burnout. Improbable also has a team hard at work on the broader Web3 tooling for the M2 network, which they plan to tease more information about soon. So maybe let's really quickly pause there. Thoughts on the three individuals and organization that they mentioned. Spencer, Daniel, we already talked about, and uh, Improbable that's working on the tech. Well, I can say um, one thing first. Yeah. Improbable was at 10KTF's first event in March of last year. So this is March, 2021. This is at least nine months out of the, before the acquisition. And I remember being there and Figgy um, seeing me and being like, Hey, Atari, you need to talk to this person. And that person was somebody that worked at Improbable. So back in March, it wasn't really known. I went on their website afterwards and I was like, yeah, I don't really know what Improbable is. It's, their website was very buzzwordy. I was like, that's weird. I was like, okay, whatever. And I, uh, it wasn't until the other side information was released months later where they mentioned Improbable that I'm like, I've seen this website before and I've seen that name before. And they, they, they had mentioned at the party, the guy mentioned that he was, you know, potentially working with 10KTF on some projects that they have planned. Nothing concrete yet, but, you know, there's some potential interest there. So that's the first thing that stands out to me is, again, how far back does this connection really go? How how early on were 10KTF and Renu actually closely working together? And each time I think about it more, each time I push the timeline back even more. That's one thing. Second is... I, I I think they mentioned, so the blog mentions Dan again, and it says that Dan is specifically going to be helping with uh, uh, how they can get the community involved with working uh, on the other side way more than what's currently happening. And that's going to start next year. So we expect to, Dan's going to be a big player, it seems like, uh, when it comes to communicating updates with the community, li- liaising with us, and then also giving us new ways and asking us questions. So that's something I also expect. And then with Spencer, um, I, I think what the the what he's worked on is really interesting. He's been president of games and he's brought together a talented team. And so he knows the talent that Yuga needs from like a gaming perspective. And so it's cool to see just the team kind of falling into place here with the chief operating officer Figgy, uh, chief gaming officer and Spencer, and the chief uh, 
executive officer in Dan and two out of the three of, the, of them have a massive background in gaming and then Figgy has a massive background in content, which you need for gaming. So those are my thoughts there, maybe. Yeah, and working for the uh, World Championship of League of Legends for years now, uh, yeah. possi- with possible. So um, also producing like the best uh, gaming events the ones that are seen by millions of people. So like that that that's where you get like uh like we say now that the the holy grail, the trifecta, like <laughs> you get the best at gaming, but you get the best also at producing gaming events. So whoa. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> so what I see in this, like beside whoa. what you said, <laughs> beside what you said um i would like to add what um about improbable that like it's incredible what they've been able to to do i've seen people in the gaming is uh, industry but not like more like gamers that have that have been playing games on the internet for like years and years and years and years being right. like wow we are 5000 people playing together in the same scenario and we can all interact together. This is nuts. Because like to reach that level of operability, um, the level of freedom, um, like for your for your avatar and everything, the way you interact with others, with so, so many players online in the same map, in the same land, that's incredible. So improbable right now, it's doing like, yeah. they're like number one in the world, delivering on this, a specific needing which is getting as many people as possible to be able like to to play uh simultaneously in the same land in the same place without be- having them like separated like other games did uh so that that's yeah. absolutely incredible and that's what ne- what is needed uh so that we can really um play all together and and meet everybody uh when we're gonna be entering the the other side so that's like that that's so so cool one of the most important things that are gonna make like the other side a very unique game like it's delivering on something that has never happened before yeah absolutely so that's a bit about their team we can jump into now an update on playable avatars yo so here's a screenshot (laughs) of a coda a playable coda so hint hint for the people that have codas looks like you're going to be able to jump in with your coda and uh, play with that so that's pretty cool Um, here's what they say we want to see our pfps brought to life this is a complex hurdle it's more than just adding some legs we're laying the foundation for a tool that accounts for avatars of all shapes sizes face heights accessories and motion specifications Users should be able to enter other side, connect their wallet, and then instantly start playing as their NFT. If you have a BAYC, MAYC, or MeBit, this won't require a lift on your end. However, creators of all stripes should be able to create and play as their own unique avatars in a world that can be as intimate or densely populated with other users as they desire. A few other collections are working to get their avatars other side ready as well. More info on that soon. In partnership with Improbable, we've taken steps towards the avatar portion of the other side development kit. This will be a suite of tools to enable creators to build and customize avatars. <clears throat> and so you can see here, uh, kind of like a Tin Man as a test running around in the other side. First thing that comes to my mind is like uh, the the first other side trailer where we see uh, all those uh, other projects included. So that sentence that we read there, right. where they say other projects are working with us to get their uh, NFTs also to be uh, immediately uh, avatars in the other side those are the projects that are working with them right now that's what i think so uh, i'm expecting to see punks i'm expecting to see cryptodes wow uh what else was there uh cool cats uh you know all of those that we saw there they're probably going to be um yeah supported um by the by the other side but even though um um even though uh, you know um you maybe own another um another nft and you don't want you don't have this opportunity the fact that they're gonna give you anyway uh, a tool to be able to create your own avatar um in the way you want obviously that's mm-hmm. gonna help uh 
people be happier uh, playing because you want that customization and not everyone can afford those nfts which are you know all they they picked like the best projects that also have a higher floor prices like you're not gonna pay one thousand two thousand dollars just for an avatar if you're just starting out so um yeah that's what i think about avatars but obviously uh well, exactly like what i said um during the live um, <laughs> we are the TNKTF captains and it will be very, very cool for us to enter the other side as captains. We have already been uh, running yeah. around New Tokyo, you know, playing our songs on a, on a stage. So we are physically yeah. in New Tokyo as characters, like we exist. So yeah, I would like to jump uh, into the other side with the same avatar, to be honest. <laughs> I think you too. <laughs> And diamond as well. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly that's exactly what I thought. I see these custom avatars, and I was like, "Oh, anybody can create them." I'm like, "Look, we knew Yuga, level with me here. If you're not going to create the captain avatars, then when the ODK is open, uh, I definitely will. But I would obviously very much like it if we can get our avatars. I would love that. That'd be such a nice." Christmas present <laughs> hint hint <laughs> <laughs> next is environment customization it says that it's important other side doesn't cater only to a technically savvy audience we've heard from the community of all skill levels that they want to be able to express themselves with in-game building tools similar to the ones you'll find in some of our favorite sandbox games like Fallout 4 or 7 Ways to Die and we are working with Improbable and Voyagers to do just that here's a sneak peek at what some of that looks like so hold on actually what's interesting is they said that we are working with improbable and voyagers to, to do just that who are the voyagers that are helping them with that do they have like a secret council of um other deed holders that they're working with um and then they show um i'll put up some of the gifts on the stream so you guys can take a look but they show the uh, uh putting down fences, creating walls, stuff like that. And it reminds me a lot about Fortnite as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To be honest, uh, yeah, uh, that's a good thing to uh, underline there, uh, voyage, Voyagers as well. Because if you remember the first time they dropped the other side website, like the first, first um, um, uh, menu of the other side that we could see, there were there was a section uh, that it was about uh, creators and you could uh, send them mm -hmm. like your resume as a cr gaming creator. Like if you were like, for example, someone that was creating already in other games that you maybe uh, were a builder. So you were able to build like islands, cities, uh, everything you did. If you had like yeah. some kind of knowledge on building other games, you could apply, send them your resume, tell them what you have been doing and uh, you I don't know what they did because I told some people to do it. They didn't hear back, but maybe some people heard back from them and they told them, okay, we would like you to give us like your feedback on how to do this. You, we would like you to test the beta or whatever. So I think that, yeah, that there are some people that are definitely helping them. People that built uh, other games, uh, even just as creators, not like people that were actually team right. in the team, but like, creators that that created um other in, in other lands other games as well so that's cool okay and then it also says that on on topic of customization voyagers will be able to name and start crafting the story of their other deed and see this info reflected on other side atlas starting early new year so uh you can you can personalize your other deed it'll update the metadata and you can have like a little story about your uh land your coda etc and then um cool it goes on to say if you didn't already guess from the artwork on other deeds themselves these environments are going to be fucking beautiful the creative teams are hard at work on the biomes of other side and we're incredibly stoked about the results today we got our first look at it in engine version of the bone environment here's a sneak peek of some more process artwork showing bone spirals and crystal environments so Here's the bone environment that we just saw, uh, some of the artwork for that. Here's some of the crystal, uh, or that's the crystal, that's the spiral right here. But yeah, these are all going to be really cool 
um, to look at. And then it, it gets into the big question, when second trip? And it says, it's coming late March of 2023. There will be new environments, new mechanics, and an even higher concurrency of users that we experienced in the first trip. Uh, second trip will be a huge step for other side and will be more gamified and high energy. The introduction of these new spaces and mechanics will make it for a far richer experience and enable the space to open much more frequently. Customers out, customizable <laughs> avatars will not be ready yet, but there's a fun solution for those who want to enter with an NFT. Stay tuned for details on that. Also, there might be flying just because. Ooh. <laughs> just because, why not? <laughs> um, let me let me finish it off and then we can talk about it completely. So yeah, it, in that trailer we heard a noise. What was that noise? It says, "Other side is a harsh place, and as it turns out, we're not alone there." Traversing the desert of a bone deed, Curtis Blue and Voyager discover a glowing pulsing stone. Beginning in Q1 of 2023 and continuing throughout the year, a series of activations will come online, introducing users to some of the other inhabitants of Other Side. This is an important milestone for the Voyager's journey. There will be ways to follow and play along. Some of these experiences will occur inside the other side, while others will be playable, interactive site-based experiences designed to help you build up your arsenal of entitlements before other launch, other side launches broadly. Um, uh, I look at this, though. This came, I think, afterwards. It says, also, Wagmisan is still missing, but you can download <laughs> new background images for desktop and mobile. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't see that the first time. I don't think I was there the first time because the no. tweet came afterwards. So look at that. Look at that. Another <laughs> shout out on the website. <laughs> Let's go. That's awesome. Well, the second trip um, is going to be in March. So we have some months to prepare for that. I can't wait to see more information as it, uh, as it comes out. And uh, yeah, like... I'm expecting uh, much more integration uh, with the tank ATF as well coming um, coming right. for the second trip. So we got the glasses uh, in the first trip. Uh, I'm expecting more stuff uh, in the second trip. So uh, it's all gonna make sense. It will all make sense uh, with the storyline for sure. So that's gonna be pretty cool for us. So we're gonna go from experiencing the storyline of tank ATF like we did to actually uh doing something uh practical so we're gonna i think that it's possible that with what we do in the second trip we are going to um change the events or anyway influence the events of the uh, of the story because that's the coolest thing no what we do as a group as like voyagers yeah. in the other side it's gonna have an effect in the future of the content so that's what i'm looking forward uh, the most the interoperability the the fact that um the gamers are actually changing the future of the whole project so that's what i'm expecting yeah yeah second trip march 2023 book it get ready <laughs> for it um i'm excited for it and uh conveniently that's one month before nft nyc so i wonder if there's going to be some tie into the Yuga event at NFT NYC because that's now in, in April, not June as it was last mm -hmm. year. So that's going to be interesting. I think, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to jump on the other side. We'll obviously be uh, streaming it. We'll do it together. Like last time we were doing it separately and we met up in the other side, this time we're going to do it all together. Uh, Possibly as the captains, cross your fingers. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we could work something out. So um, I'm excited for that. And that actually leads into that last sentence, leads into on that blog post, the second mm -hmm. tweet that we got, but this time on the 10 KTF account. So that was crazy. And it was another video. So let's, let's go to that now.
<laughs> last summer coming this winter. <laughs> okay, so it looks like Wagmi-san, we're finally going to find out what happened last summer. And for those that don't know, that whole last summer thing is one line on the 10KTF OpenSea page. The last sentence says, after what happened last summer, he can't let that happen again. So we've always question, asked the question, what happened last summer? In my first thread in that I wrote in October 2021 about 10KTF storytelling, I said that was one of the questions that I asked as well. And I was like, and what the hell happened last summer? And so we're seeing this now play out where it looks like Wagmi-san was in the other side last summer. And there's so many implications to that. So first of all, what that means is that Wagmi-san has had Coda Juice before. Is Wagmi-san making Coda Juice? Does he know who the plug is and you know he can get Coda Juice whenever he wants? When did he first go to the other side? And then the first trip and Wagmi-san losing his glasses makes so much more sense now because why were Wagmi-san's glasses in the other side? Obviously, here during last summer, he went to the other side and then he came back and he forgot his glasses there. So uh, there's so many things that are starting to click now and I'm so excited. And it, this was such a cool moment, I think, to look at it at a meta level of the other side and 10KTF both experiencing a Thursday and for us to be live streaming that day as well and to see both and get the reactions. I thought that was such an interesting moment. Yeah, like <laughs> I just went quickly to Discord uh, and searched for last summer and then went to the oldest messages. Uh, I'm the third mm. person talking about what happened last summer. Uh, the first um, the first message is from September 19, uh, 2021. So the first time someone referred to last summer, um, it was... Uh, Xifty Rider that unfortunately they're not in the Discord anymore. I think they dropped in KTF, but anyway, they wrote what happened last summer. This is for like to understand. <laughs> this is to understand how long we have been waiting for. And then uh, the third message is mine. I say on November, uh, on September twenty third, twenty twenty one. What happened last summer? We have been asking for a long time. <laughs> like we even. Like there was there was a summer a summer in between, so we don't even know which summer we're talking about anymore. But anyway, <laughs> what happened last summer? But like, yeah, this was incredible. Like you said, the crossover, the fact that we were live streaming, and uh, let's talk a bit about the connections that we can see inside uh, the two videos. So we can see that both videos are filmed filmed <laughs> in the same um in the same environment so we're talking about the bone environment mm -hmm. there is just a difference like at, at least for what i could see um the second video obviously it's an they're in a different timeline like many uh grailed already uh found out they they, they said it during the live as well so it's not the same timeline it's in a different moment you can see that uh wagmi san uh, in Wagmi-san's video, the bones are still kind of covered by by the sand, so the sand has like there there are more more layers of sand that are covering the bones. While in the first videos that we saw before, you can already see the whole structure of the animal, and they and they walk inside of it, right? So it's like I don't know Wagmi-san. It's like trying to get something out of the sand probably with uh, uh with what he's doing uh so we don't know what it is but anyway it happened before uh curtis and dakota uh got to the same place so yeah that's the the connection that we can see and that's how the story is unfolding right now and um like personally i don't think uh, I don't think this was planned before. I have to be honest. I I think that this um, started to become a thing. Like, I think that the original story was different when they dropped it in September, uh, 2021. Not September this year. In September 2021, and then afterwards, when they started the conversations with Yuga, uh, the acquisition, the other side, and everything, 
uh, they decided to drop their last summer story or maybe modify it a bit to make it um, yeah. to integrate it with uh, the other side and you got I don't know like do, do, if you think the same I, I agree there actually I think that as uh, like when you're making a an anthology a series you always have possible directions that you can go but you want to leave hints for those possible directions and you don't want to tie yourself to anything because you never know what's going to happen and so when when the Yuga connection they started working together and it was a good working relationship. And then um, there was talks for acquisition and all of that. That's of course, I think when they're like, okay, well, what can we do last summer or how, how, how do we solve that mystery and how can we make it an exciting way to tie into the greater story? I don't think that, you know, when Wagmi Sun started in September, 2021, that the whole idea of other side and all that was even like a thing. This is all a, an unfolding story. So we're getting to see it being written, uh, but it's also awesome because that's something that you know we've all been seeing for quite a while. What happened last summer? So uh, that's 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 that. I think that uh, I want to highlight that the two videos are very different in their art style because the other side of video is about this is in-game footage, and then you have the Wagmisan video being two thirty-five with the bars on top and bottom, makes it more cinematic. It's very Quentin Tarantino. It's very Mad Max. And so I'm loving, again, all the influence of Hollywood and all all the pop culture references. It was a very magical Thursday and unexpected, to be honest, a very unexpected Thursday on our end because we were expecting team to start winding down for Christmas. And last year they had wound down already and they took two weeks off. This it looks like this was... Uh, they went right to the end for this one. And I'm sure the team is off now because today's Christmas Eve, obviously. And so uh, it was very eventful. It was so cool. And one thing I'm loving is all the uh, all the fact that now we have the other side, the Board of Yacht Club, and then also um, 10KTF in focused on one thing and how they all overlap. And we on our live streams, we see some of the Yuga community and the other side community showing up on our chat and messaging. And, you know, it's become like a big family. Speaking of big family, there's actually one thing that we haven't talked about, which is Jimmy the trial. That was, that dropped Wednesday. We haven't even had a chance to talk about that. So we had three videos this week. Let's watch that too. Yuga. Okay, where do we start? <laughs> it's just um, like... 
so Legions to the <laughs> max form. <laughs> I saw Yeah, I saw uh I saw a comment by Gordon Goner on Twitter. He said they were going for Ren and Stimpy vibes for this one, and I definitely felt that. It's like an old, I wanna say probably late eighties or nineties cartoon. I think nineties. Mm-hmm. Um so I thought that was interesting. I thought that one thing I haven't talked about, and I'm running a thread about this right now, actually, is there's something about that key. What's notable about this is that the key and the box, they're sparkly. They have some sort of magical aura about them. And every drink that every one of the apes touches or drinks, the key touches and imbues with some magical property. So that's going to play out in some way. The apes don't know that they... Because uh, even the bottle opener, they open the bottle with the key, and it, it, it's the drinks and the keys are seen together so many times. So something's going on there for sure. Um, and then I also saw that, like, people are saying, is that Jimmy or is that not Jimmy? Because Jimmy looks different yeah. from the photos of the bo- of the roadmap and everything. He's wearing, like, a little fez hat, which is maroon, and this person looks different. Some people are questioning whether that's Jimmy or not. Um, and then if it's the trial of Jimmy, it looks like Jimmy just died. So I don't think that my I don't think that is Jimmy actually. Um, something tells me that that's just another ape. So those are that's what I saw. Jimmy just died. What do you mean? Well, at the end of the video, yeah, you can hear the flat line where he can't get the Whoa. key out, and it's I a flat understand. line, and it looks like Jimmy died. I didn't understand it though. I don't know. Now I'm sad. <laughs> I thought they were just gonna, you know, uh, extract the key in some way and he was gonna survive. Like, oh, I didn't understand it. It, it was gonna die. Oh, this is sad. Oh, okay. It sounds like it. I could be wrong. It sounds like it. But again, I don't think that that's Jimmy if, mm. uh, if, uh, because you can hear the flat line in the back. And it kind of looks like he died. I don't think he just passed out. I don't know. All right. Yeah. Um, like what? Like regarding all this all video. Um, one interesting thing that um, that really took like um. Let me rephrase. Regarding this video, one of the most interesting things for me uh, was like at the beginning of it, uh, when you see the ape, like the ape that comes out of the toilet of the, you know, um, it's like dressed in like a soldier. And um, we saw those apes uh, when they first uh, shared the image of the box. Um, And uh, um, it's like something coming from the past. So there is a whole, probably a whole story, uh, like maybe the origins of bored apes, like what happened in the past. Who are these ape soldiers that are bringing this uh, uh, this magical objects? So I don't know. There is a whole interesting side of it that we will discover in the future for sure. Uh, and then I, I think it's important also to. Um, uh, to say once again uh, that it was very cool to see uh, famous apes, apes of community members uh, being part of the uh, of the video as well. So um, that's what's very, very cool. I was able to recognize some of them. Uh, and when I saw them, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I, I, I like that. It's very, uh, it's very 10 KTF-ish. <laughs> yeah, like Tropo. Vera, Vicky, and then there's a few others that were there as well. So this was a Some jam-packed way to close off Q4. Yeah, exactly. Jam-packed way to close off Q4. Um, so many things happened with the other side, with 10KTF and with Bored Apes. The damn show, damn show has gone full Yuga. We're just, we're all about Yuga because 10KTF is all about Yuga. And so even though we talk about other projects... Our core will always be 10KTF. And where 10KTF goes, the dam will be there. And so the dam <laughs> does yuga on this episode. That's the title. The dam does yuga. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any parting thoughts? Yeah, of course. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays uh, to everyone. This has been an amazing year that we spent together from beginning to end. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, what I want to say is that uh, this has been an incredible year of also for the Dem Show because we started the Dem Show, obviously, and I can't wait for the new year, uh, for people to see what we have in store, for people to see uh, our new productions. And uh, um, I can't wait to start streaming the other side as well. So stay tuned because we are absolutely going to be doing that. We're uh, absolutely going to be there with you every Thursday, every damn Thursday uh, when uh, <laughs> we got parties in uh, on discord or we got parties in the other side maybe <laughs> that's what the future if that's what the future will bring uh but uh yeah this has been uh, incredible and uh, yeah can't wait to see you all again in a new year so this is from me <laughs> very well very well put everything maybe said and more thank you everybody for watching the damn show if you haven't already please like and subscribe to the video and we will see you uh, on Thursday for whatever is happening this Thursday, post-Christmas, pre-New Year's Eve. Take care, everybody.